What's going on guys and today I'm doing a grading of all of the teams and their draft picks from yesterday's, and yesterday's NBA draft. I was thinking about doing a reaction video but I feel like this is a much better idea as I can kind of go through it pretty quickly and talk about it. So let's get it started. First things first it's going to be in alphabetical order. So the Atlanta Hawks, I gave them a B plus. I like their picks. I think Torian Prince was picked really high at number 12 where he could have slipped all the way down to 21. But I do like their two picks where they picked up Torian Prince and DeAndre Bembry. Both guys I like a lot. I feel like they can fit really well in the Hawks. I wish that they got Denzel Valentine. I feel like that's a great landing spot for him. But regardless, two great picks by the Hawks. They did get Isaiah Cordonier, or I don't know how to say his name entirely in the second round, but I don't know too much about him, but people are very high on him. Basically, if they're second round picks, I'm going to just say what I know based on people's reactions because I don't know too, too much about international guys or second rounders. So, yeah. Moving on to the Boston Celtics, and I'll give them a C. I do like the Boston Celtics, and this was a really questionable draft for them. Picking up Jalen Brown first, um, well, they're with their third pick, and then they picked up two international guys in Zizic and Yabusele. Um, they picked up Demetrius Jackson, Ben Bentel, and Nader in the second round. And I think their second round was much more solid than their first round in terms of the fan base. Yabuselli and Zizic can certainly become good NBA players, but we don't know just yet. And Jalen Brown looks alright, but that was kind of a, a reach where they could have traded down to about 6 or 7 and still picked him up, I felt. But overall, I thought this draft was very just average. Uh, I like Bentel a lot. I feel like he can be very special in the NBA as kind of like a bird random bass type and uh, hopefully this goes well for the Celtics all right moving on up next we are going to be talking about the Brooklyn Nets oh my bad the Brooklyn Nets I gave them the B minus because even though they did um, get back into the draft and get some decent players in Kurt Karis LeVair and uh, Isaiah Whitehead I don't know if these are the right guys both guys are kind of shooting guard types I feel like what they need the most is a point guard maybe they can get that in free agency but overall, I thought this was an alright uh, picks for them. I like the Whitehead pick. You know, I don't like him too much as a player. Bringing him back to Brooklyn, I feel that's a really good um, PR move and whatnot. So overall, I think the Nets picks were not too great, but not too bad. Now moving on to the next one, the Charlotte Hornets. I gave them a C plus because they traded away the first round pick for Marco Bellinelli. And I gotta say, Marco Bellinelli isn't that great anymore. He's just an average NBA player, if not below that. I don't know who they're going to pick with their sec, uh, 22nd pick. I mean, that was our Malachi Richardson went, and I don't think he'd fit very well with the Hornets. So maybe Jordan or uh, Rich Cho, I believe, runs the Hornets, has an idea about this. But in my opinion, it's just a kind of questionable move. Uh, not the worst, but not the greatest. Moving on to the Chicago Bulls, and I like their draft a lot. First things first, I'm going to say I don't know anything about Paul Zipser, their second round pick, but I do know about Denzel Valentine, and I love that pick. I gave them an A- because I feel like he was the best player available, and he can help out the Bulls in many ways. They do have quite a bit of small forwards on their team, which is probably going to be Valentine's position in the pros, but since getting rid of Derrick Rose, they don't have a primary playmaker anymore, and I feel like Valentine can be that at the next level. So that's the reason why I gave them an A- and I hope the best for the Bulls. Not a huge fan of them, but I'm a huge fan of Denzel Valentine and what he can become in the NBA. Now going to the Cleveland Cavaliers, where I believe they bought the second round pick, which I'm being K Felder, and I'm going to give them a B plus. Now at this point, you really don't have too, too many options, especially when you're the Cavaliers and you just won the title. But getting a guy in Kay Felder is not too bad. Uh, Kay is pretty much a mix of Nate Robinson and Ty Lawson. He's pretty similar to Isaiah Thomas, a more athletic, but he might not be as great of a player. Um, pretty good playmaker, really athletic, as I mentioned earlier. you got to watch him on YouTube. Great highlights. Um, and I feel like he can be a good third backup point guard. Nothing too special, but maybe in a few years he can be a six-man or maybe even like a fringe starting guy. And I like... I like it a decent amount for the Cavs. Alright, moving on to the Dallas Mavericks where I gave them a C+. Plus. I don't know too much about AJ Hammonds, but a lot of people like him. They just question his maturity and his, um, his motor for the most part. So, I mean, that's not the absolute worst. DeAndre, not DeAndre, Andre Drummond had that same issue when he came out of Connecticut. And look at him now. He's the, probably the best center in the East. So, 
I mean, it's not huge issues. Of course, it's not great. But the Mavericks have just never been a great drafting team. Even, I mean, their best pick that they made was probably Michael Finley. I think he was drafted by them. Because, I mean, Dirk wasn't drafted by them. He was drafted by the Bucks and traded to them. Which you may consider to be their pick. But, mm, I don't know. But anyways, I think that regardless was an okay pick. And why not try to get a backup center? Not the worst idea. Moving on to the Denver Nuggets, and I give them an A minus. They got a lot of great players. They got Jamal Murray, who I like a lot, who I can feel, who I can feel can be pretty special in the league, considering how much he scored at Kentucky as a freshman. They got some other guys I don't know too much about, like how do you say his name, Juan Herman Gomez and Peter Cornel Corneli. But they did not pick up other guys I do like, like Malik Beasley, a really good shooter. They're obviously trying to get more up tempo with a lot of three-point shooting, and I feel like Jamal Murray could fit really well next to <coughs> Emmanuel Moutier and a shooting guard. You still have talented players in both Will Barton and Gary Harris so maybe they need to figure this out as they're kind of at a log jam but it's better to have a log jam than to have no depth whatsoever so the Nuggets get a nice little A minus. Moving on to the Detroit Pistons I gotta say they had a great draft uh, I don't know about Gabinji I like him a little bit uh, a lot of people I hear from online like him a lot <clears throat> I'm not a Syracuse fan but he does look all right. And then Henry Allenson's a pretty good player, I gotta say. And that's a good pick for them. Get a nice stretch four off the bench. Uh, pretty much getting Ursan Ilyasova. If, I feel like coming into the league, Henry Allenson can do the same things that Ursan Ilyasova did like this year or the year previous. Not his best year, but you know, uh, shoot the three, rebound, play some good defense. Uh, I, I like him a lot. He had some crazy numbers on Marquette, pretty athletic, and I like him quite a bit. I, he kind of seems like a douchebag. I don't know if it's just the fact that um, it's his haircut or something. I don't know. Uh, might just be based on his looks. He might be a really nice guy, so I don't know um, entirely what to say. But I mean, he I think that's a great pick for the Pistons. So I gave him a nice little A minus. All right, moving on to the Golden State Warriors, I gave him a solid B. I gave him a B because they chose Damian Jones over Deonta Davis, and I feel like Davis is a much better player, or can be, due to his young age and his raw skill set, where I feel in a few years he can be at least fast as Azili, uh level. And Damian Jones isn't a bad player, and I like Patrick McCall a little bit, a really good defensive player, but I don't know how well they'll fit on the Warriors, as they're a pretty deep team, and they are pretty set in the rotations, unless they're trying to make some actual big moves. Alright, going on to the Houston Rockets, I gave them a B. They picked up two guys that most people haven't heard of, and Chianu Onuwaku, who I actually don't know anything about, and Zuki. Now, Zuki won't be really good for at least two years, I feel. He's... I believe 7'2", 210, which is extremely skinny. But I mean, this is a great PR move by the Rockets. Getting another Chinese super, super big guy. Um, last time they did it, it was Yao Ming. And even though they didn't win the title, it was great to see Yao Ming be so successful on the Rockets. Just to have a pretty solid but short career. So I think that's a pretty good move, especially since the Rockets have a huge following in China. Um, and if Zuki can come into the league and probably put on 30 pounds, I think he can be a pretty solid player um he does three point range and he can rebound uh, as well as shoot from the outside he's kind of soft but besides that i think that um it's not a bad pick all right moving on to the indiana pacers and i gave them an a between the trades um and i don't know too much about george niang i believe he went to iowa state or somewhere like that i think the trades are what really made me um enjoy this pick they end up getting Jeff Teague and Thaddeus Young by giving away pretty much the rights to Chris Laver and George Hill. And that's absolutely a great trade. It fits really well as their weaknesses last year was the power forward spot or center spot, depending on where you thought Miles Turner would play. And I mean, he's more of a center than power forward. And point guard, they really didn't have a huge feature in. Of course, Monte Ellis isn't really a guy you want to build around nowadays. Um, but I still think that's a really good two moves right there. Picking up Jeff Teague and Thaddeus Young. And uh, maybe Niang will actually do something in the league. You never know with these late first, I mean, uh, late second round picks. But I think it's a good pick by them regardless. Now moving on to the Los Angeles Clippers. And I gotta say they had some pretty solid picks as well. I don't know anything about David M Muchino. 
Uh, but they picked up some so pretty good guys between Bryce Johnson and Diamond Stone. They did have to trade away Sheik Diallo, who I do not like that much. I believe he had one total assist in 20-something games at Kansas, which really shows he's not really ready to play within a team. But they picked up some really nice guys in Bryce Johnson and Diamond Stone. Where Diamond Stone, he is extremely out of shape right now. Uh, at least he looks that way. He has a very, very round face. He could be a pretty special player down the low post. And Bryce Johnson I like a lot. Um, a really good hustle guy. Gets you a lot of rebounds. Play some defense, garbage buckets, stuff like that. And that's absolutely perfect for the Clippers as they really need big man depth. Now moving on to the Los Angeles Lakers where I give them an A. They ended up picking up Ivaka Zubac, who I don't know too much about, but they did pick up Brandon Ingram, which is a really good pick for them. Um, they could have went with Buddy, and even though I like Buddy, I feel like that would have been a terrible choice on them to go away from probably the best player available, where Brandon Ingram right now is a pretty solid player, and they gave him a few years to put on some weight. He is incredibly skinny. And I feel like he can be a pretty talented player. So Lakers had a pretty good draft overall. And uh, yeah, I gave him an A for it. Moving on to the Memphis Grizzlies. And they had a pretty nice draft as well. They gave away a 2019 first round pick. That isn't even theirs and it's lottery protected. In order to pick up, I believe, two second round picks. Um, which is not always the greatest. Um... But I'm going to say, they end up picking up some really good guys. And Wade Baldwin, a pretty good shooting point guard. And this is pretty much Mike Conley insurance. And if Mike Conley still stays, he can be a good backup point guard for them. Picked up Deonta Davis, um, a guy who can come off the bench and kind of play the Brandon Wright role. And give some relief to Mark Gasol and Zach Randolph. Just go out there, rebound, and defend. And then they picked up some other guys I really haven't heard of. Uh, Roddy Zagarach and Wang Zellin. Don't know either. Um, so we're going to just go over those. But I think the Grizzlies did a really nice draft. Um, and I hope they'll do well in the future. All right. Miami Heat had no picks. Not going to spend any time, time on them. So I gave them an incomplete. Moving on to the Milwaukee Bucks. And this was a swing for the fences move if you've ever seen one basically they trade away um in the second round in the 38th pick for the 36th pick um nothing really really too impressive there they picked up malcolm brogdon from i believe virginia who some people like but the real move is thought maker at 10 this is a stretch of all stretches where some people didn't have him in the first round his people are convinced that he's actually 24 years old five years older than he claims he is but the thing about him is if he can come into league and even be a like half of the guy he was in high school he'll be a solid pick but if he can be like at 80 percent he will be exactly what the bucks need the things that the bucks struggle with is having a consistent playmaker three-point shooting and protecting the rim of course they need some rebounding help too and thon maker can do all this at least he did in high school maybe it won't come for over to the nba but i i think milwaukee's good enough at developing players that they'll be able to get at least 75 percent of what he did in high school converted to the nba where he's going to be able to be pretty much a point forward i i don't think you want him handling the ball that much but you want him um involved in plays blocking shots and uh being a stretch for um i feel like he's power forward as of right now due to a skinny frame but i think if this works out milwaukee got themselves a huge steal they will have length for years and i, I like thon maker a lot can't wait to play them in 2k next year now moving on to the Minnesota Timberwolves, picking up Chris Dunn. I gave him a B plus. Um, even though Chris Dunn's the best player, it's really unusual uh, what's going to happen with Ricky Rubio. Maybe they should have looked at some trades with um, the Bulls, where they trade away. I believe it was Levine and this pick, and maybe something else. No nothing too major uh, for Jimmy Butler, and I thought that that was the best option available for them. Um, as I don't know how great Levine will be. Of course, he has huge potential. People are loving on the potential, but Jimmy Butler is a, pro, a proven commodity where he can be a second team player pretty much um, and, and lean your team to the playoffs, especially with Tom Thibodeau, where he loved Tom Thibodeau back when he was on the Bulls. So why not try to uh, reunite the two and bring something special? But Chris Dunn is still a great pick. I like him a lot, and I feel like he can lead the Timberwolves to great success in the future. Moving on to New Orleans Pelicans, I gave them a B. They ended up picking up Sheik Diallo in the second round, um, who is not too special, but the big thing is the Buddy Heald pick. I was kind of convinced they'd choose Jamal Murray before the draft. He slipped that far because of the fact that the Kentucky ties 
with um, Anthony Davis and throwing the fact that they also drafted Nerlens Noel a couple years ago before trading him away. But Buddy Heald is still a great pick. At his worst case scenario, he becomes a spot-up three-point shooter, which is pretty much modern-day Eric Gordon. So they're basically re replacing Eric Gordon with like a 15 million or like a 10 at least million dollar cheaper contract. But at his best, he can be a really talented ball dominant guard. And uh, I think that was a good pick for them. Of course, you, some people think that Buddy might bust. I don't think he will. I think he'll just be a decent NBA player. Maybe be like a one or two time All-Star. But anyways, I think that that was still a decent pick for them. Going on to the Knicks, they had no picks either, so I'm giving them an incomplete. Now moving on to the first team I'm giving an A+, the Oklahoma City Thunder. It might be hard to leave Ibaka, but the thing is they got so much back in return, not only in the draft but in the trades, where they picked up Oladipo, Ersan Inusova, and the 11th pick in Demonis Sabonis. All these guys can bring a lot to the Thunder, where now they have a legit starting two guard who can play defense and has actually has some sort of offensive skill, unlike Roberson. I like Roberson. But the thing is, he can't play offense. And Old Depot, even though he can't really shoot, he is still he can still handle the ball and do some sort of playmaking. Sabonis is very talented. I don't know if he's gonna start right away at power four. That might put Enos Canna right there. But I feel like he can be a very talented player as a player in a few years. Also in the second round, they picked up Daniel Hamilton, a guy I like a lot, which you'll f soon figure out why. Um, he'll probably end up on the D League team, but if he can. Uh, improve his shooting percentages and improve his um, mentality towards the game in terms of taking better shots. He can be an easy um, role player on any team due to his rebounding, playmaking, and his hustle on defense. Anyways, that was a great draft for the Thunder where they had like, a low first round pick I believe and they turned that all the way into a starting two guard and a potential all-star in Demonis Sabonis. Now moving into the Orlando Magic, I gave them a B-. minus. Because even though they gave up a lot of assets, they didn't pick up Serge Ibaka, and I feel like he fits perfectly next to Vucevic. A, a guy who can stretch the floor and block shots is exactly what they need next to Vucevic. Even though Vucevic can stretch the floor, bringing him out to the three-point land will be amazing. And then the fact that Vucevic can't play low post defense, Ibaka will be able to cover up for that. This is a little bit questionable with the Aaron Gordon situation, what he's going to do with that. But besides that, I thought that was a pretty okay trade for them. It wasn't the greatest, but it wasn't the worst. Alright, moving on next to trust the process. Philadelphia 76ers get an A+. This is solely because of the fact that they picked up Ben Simmons, probably the best player in this draft. Well, it's the best player in this draft. Um, because of that, they deserve an A+. And by picking up two international guys, some people might be questioning it, but I think Furkan Korkmaz might be a decent player, but Timothy Luwalu, I love saying his name. It's, it's a great name, Luawu, Timothy, however you say it. But he seems like a very special player. When I look at international European guys, I usually look at their demeanor and how they act. And usually the more confident and more cocky and more arrogant they are, the better they are. Think of some guys like Darko Milicic. He didn't seem very aggressive. Of course, I wasn't very old when he was drafted, but there's never reports that, oh, he's this aggressive guy and he... He plays with his heart, um, where in terms of like Porzingis, like just watching him play, he plays with a lot of energy, a lot of effort. Uh, I mean, Milicic was that athletic, but he really didn't play with effort, it seemed. Um, if you watch Porzingis, like just dunking and everything, just playing very aggressive, trying to get to the rim, that's what Luwalu looks like. I hope he can become something special. He looks like he can be a very special NBA player in a few years. And I think the Sixers made some great picks and potentially getting their starting power forward and shooting guard for the future. Now moving on to the Phoenix Suns that had one of the craziest and hardest to follow drafts besides the Sacramento Kings. In the end, they ended up picking up Dragon Bender, Marquise Chris, and Tyler Eulis, three guys who are all very special. Tyler Eulis is kind of funny considering the fact that they had Isaiah Thomas a couple years ago and he's the same height as him. He's a lot skinnier, I don't know if he'll make it in the league for that long because of his weight, but... <coughs> They did pick up two pretty talented big guys in Dragon Bender and Marquise Chris. And I feel between the two of them, there's at least a good there's a pretty good chance at least one of them will be a solid NBA player. They gave up a lot of things and Bogdan Bogdanovich, Papa Papa John's, however you say his name, Georgie, uh, Scala Bissier, and a future second rounder. But all those are kind of um, nothing compared to some of the things that they picked up. Where Dragon Bender, 
I don't know how good he'll be, but I feel like the Phoenix it can still do something with him, and then Marquise Chris I like a lot, so I feel like they can, between the two of them, they can develop at least one of them into a decent NBA player. Chris has actually Amari Stoudemire potential, it looks like, with his athleticism and his size. So I gave them an A-, minus just based off of potential. Moving on to the Portland Terra Blazers, I gave them a B-, minus, my favorite team, where they picked up Jake Lehman. I don't know too much about him, but they end up getting a pick, which is nice to always have. Just have a rookie con onto your team. He might get the uh, Pat Connaughton Freeman, where he may not play a lot of NBA action, but just develop in the D-League, and then maybe a couple years from now, you'll be able to gr grab a nice guy in the second round where you just bought out some... Uh, some other team's pick so maybe they'll, he'll develop and sound good I mean look at some guys they've developed recently in Alan Crabb and CJ McCollum um, both great three-point shooters now so maybe Jake Lehman will be a really nice three-point shooter and the Steve Novak or a um, yeah I don't know who else maybe but like a Steve Novak role where he's just out there to shoot threes and kind of distract the defense moving on to the Sacramento Kings I gave them a C minus as a franchise they deserve like an F minus 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 but in terms of who they got I gave them a C minus they ended up giving away Marquise Chris and Bellinelli to get all their picks but they did pick up a few guys in Papa Johns Malachi Richardson Scalabissier Bogdan Bogdanovich and Isaiah Cousins now going through the guys I don't know too much about and Isaiah Cousins and Bogdan Bogdanovich. Um, I don't know who these guys are going to be. However, might not just pick up some guys to help build around your team or just, you know, draft and stash. Now, the other guys that picked up, Puppy Giannis, I don't know too much about. And then Malachi Richardson, as you know, I don't like at all, considering the fact that I mentioned earlier about Daniel Hamilton that, well, if you watch it, Jay Bet, well, Billis, however you say his name, is was ripping on Daniel Hamilton when he got drafted. Oh, he can't shoot. He's not a shooter. He has a terrible form. He can't shoot. But then he said Malachi Richardson's a knockdown three-point shooter and a crazy shooter. When Malachi Richardson shot over 2% worse from the floor, over, I believe, 15% worse from the free throw line, and only shot 1% higher from the three-point line. So I don't know what the hell he's smoking. I, I, I hate Malachi Richardson. I don't think he'll be good in the NBA. I can see him busting out pretty quickly. Uh, but I think Scalabissier at the 29th pick, or actually 28th pick, my bad, is actually a good pick. I didn't think he'd be that good in the league. But when you're getting a guy that late, he can bust and you won't be really that upset about it. So, I mean, there's a lot more chance that he'll be successful than failing, at least for his expectations at that pick. Now moving on to the San Antonio Spurs, I gave them an A for picking up Deontay Murray, where they he fell all the way down to him. I thought Deontay Murray would be a, like a late lottery pick at the absolute latest, but slipping to 29 is a blessing in disguise. I don't think it's even in disguise anymore, as Deontay Murray even admitted this was great for him. Going to the Spurs, of course he might not become a Tony Parker skill level player, but he has a Tony Parker style, get into the rim, mid-range scoring, floaters, uh, playmaking, stuff like that he's a lot taller than him but he's very skinny if the Spurs can help develop him which they're gonna do it as you see in Kawhi Leonard I think that he can become a very valuable player on their team so I think that was a great pick by them they could have uh, draft and stash which I thought they would do but when you get a guy available at that spot you might as well just swing for the fences and uh, picking up a pretty solid player now, the Toronto Raptors, I gave them a B plus for picking up Jacopoto and Pascal Seacom. Seacom felt like he went a little too early, but he's still a pretty good defensive player and a rebounder. And Jacopoto, or Jacopoto, however you say his name, I like a lot. Really, really good um, throwback player, finisher on the rim, block shots, rebound, stuff like that. I feel, feel like he'll fit really well next to Jonas Valanciunas. Um, and if not, he can come off the bench and be a solid player. Overall, I think, that, I think it was a great uh, selection by the Raptors. They could have waited a little bit more and got probably a better player um, with their second first round pick. But I'm not going to complain too much. It was a pretty nice draft for them. Alright, moving on to the Utah Jazz. They had a pretty solid draft as well, where they ended up picking up Marcus Page in the second round, Joel Bolimbi, and uh, 
George Hill through a trade. It wasn't the greatest, but it was pretty solid to say the least. They got guys that they needed, where Marcus Page might not ever be a superstar or even a great NBA player. I think he can be a decent guy off the bench, and if he develops in the D League right, he'll be more than what they ever needed. Uh, George Hill, of course, being probably their starting point guard for next year, is probably the best bet for them. And the rest of their picks, I don't know too, too much about the rest of them, but I liked the, their draft um, in general. Now moving on to the Washington Wizards, I'm throwing them in incomplete as uh, they didn't have any picks, so I'm going to go right past them. And that is the end of the grades for the draft. Anyways guys, please give me a like if you watch this far if you like this. Comment down below what you think about my grades or any of this. Subscribe for more uh, NBA content. There won't be any more draft content as the draft is over. Uh, it was a great draft to watch. I might do a lot of things about free agency uh, coming up soon, but I, I liked it overall, um, the draft. So thank you guys for watching, and of course, have a good day.